We want to see the Superior. For what? We have prayers now. What do you want? I'm very busy. Sister, I want to be a nun. Well then, do come in. I thought you were going to a party. Oh yes, um, yesterday. I heard God's voice at the dance party. And he told you to come here and speak to Mother Superior? Who is this, your mother? No, um, this is Martha. I met her in the town. Wait here. I can't go further with you. I know, it's okay. You have already done enough. This is the fourth convent we visited. All they had to say is, she is the third grader. She is a fancy, spoiled girl. It's useless going around knocking on the doors of these crazy nuns. Do you think I'm crazy? No. But there are plenty of handsome young men back in town. Forget all this nonsense about becoming a nun. <laughs> yes. She told me that God told her to come straight to you. <laughs> If God spoke to you, why do they not believe you? Yes, if he truly spoke to me, why this indifference? Is this a fantasy? So, you want to be a nun? Yes, I must. Why do you want to be a nun? To serve God. Because I heard his voice. To because take he... good care of the children. To clean house and do anything. Then you'll make a good wife and a mother. That is what my parents wanted me to be. But I have always wanted to be a nun. Young girl, do this. You seem to be persistent. Go to the chapel. Ask the master of this house if he is willing. And if you still hear him say yes, then come back to me. I waited for another year and worked hard to save enough money for my nun's habits. Then I finally joined Our Lady of Mercy Convent. Is this why you wanted me to be a nun? To make soup? Surely, you wanted something more from me, God. Do, do you hear me? These girls are noisy. I hope the girls like the soup, Sister Regina. Sister Mary, the new mistress, told me we might have 50 girls next week. 50! Can you believe it? That means... Another pot. They're cooked.
I can't hold it. Hold on. I can't hold it. God told you to come here, did he? Why didn't you ask him to catch the pot, Sister Faustina? He told Mother Directress that I was not strong, and she told me I would get better after a while. You should have asked for help. Or are you too proud? Give me the cloth. me. The nights are so dark and so cold here. I cannot understand why I was brought here. Even meditation and prayer are difficult. My hands hurt. My head hurts. And my back Maybe I was mistaken. I have never felt so far from you. I know you are busy and have a lot of other things to do. But could you please help me get through today without much embarrassment to my sisters? Sister Regina helped you with this? No. I asked Jesus to help me get through. She wasn't at morning prayers, either. And I think she's taken to lying, Mother Michael. Sister Regina, can you go check on Sister Faustina, please? Yes, Mother. It's 7.30, sister.
You can't continue this behavior and be an embarrassment to the community. Mother. I can't help it. I feel so weak. Not all are called for an austere life. Uh, especially someone unschooled. A maid, like me. Sometimes, when we don't feel worthy, we, we try too hard to become something more than what we are. Tell me, sister, how long have you been hearing voices? Visions, too. I've seen a, a great crowd of suffering souls in a misty place. Filled with fire. And then a voice asked me, Will, will you help me? <laughs> My mercy does not want this, but justice demands it. <laughs> and then I become weak. My, my soul is torn and, and my body feels it too. I, I wake up in the night and I pray. I, I pray for these souls in danger of death and damnation to hell. And I... I am exhausted. Well, others feel you're pretending to be sick to shirk your duties. What do you believe, Mother? Do not be deceived by fantasies of the mind, my daughter. Be more diligent. I shall try to work harder. Just a minute. Please, may I come in? I want to speak to you. Do you really believe that Jesus came and spoke to you personally? Yes, sister. You do know that God only speaks to saints. Only saints. Do you still think that he spoke to you? Sister, I do not claim to be a saint, and I am certainly not worthy of it. But God spoke to me, and that is all I know. I fear for your soul, sister. Thank you, sister. What do you want from me? I don't deserve you. All I can ever be is a maid.
Paint this image. Paint what? What image? The image you see before you. Paint this image exactly as you see it. <laughs> I am not a painter. You will take the assistance of an artist. Why do you tell me all this? I died once on the cross for the sins of mankind. Would you like me to die a second time? This image will serve as a warning and a blessing. This may sound strange to you now, but you will prepare the world for my final coming. They will think I'm crazy. <laughs> no one will believe me. Speak to your superiors. I will help them to hear you. <laughs> Put yourself in my position. Would you believe this? Next time, ask him for a miracle, would you? Maybe he can help you make a decent pot of soup. Now that would be a real miracle. I tried to ignore what happened. The more I suppressed it, the more strongly I was pushed to pursue it. It's a grave matter. More than an issue of discipline, what if she speaks the truth? Come on now. You believe she speaks to Jesus? More likely she knows she doesn't measure up as a nun and she's trying to get some attention. Make herself into something special to cover herself up. I'm not saying I believe all of it, but I can tell you she's not faking all of it. She goes into great convulsions from 8 to 11 at night and she snaps out of it. And that's when she tells us of her visions. And you even believe some of it? We put her through every medical test, every psychological exam, and nothing is wrong with her. Yet she feels this great pain. I have to wonder why. Why don't we suggest that she speaks with Father Sepoko? That's a good idea. Spiritual direction might help her. Isn't real iron tried in the fire? What do you mean, Sister Mary? Perhaps a challenge. Something to test her motives. Maybe we change her assignment. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, and she, and she conceived, conceived by the, by the Holy, Holy Spirit. You may not take it literally. Perhaps he wanted you to have him imprinted in your heart. They made me a doorkeeper now. I don't even get to see Sister Irene until dinner. At least she listened to me. They want to shut me down. Maybe I should start a new order. Do not get discouraged, Sister. Just be patient. If it is okay with you, I shall talk to your superiors. Meanwhile, I suggest that you write down very carefully all of your visions in a diary. Remember, if this is a God's mission, He will show you the way. Sister Mary wants you to eat and go take a nap. Thank you, sister.
She hadn't eaten for days. And you? When was the last time you ate? Wait. Don't say a word to Sister Mary. The report states that she is absolutely fine and healthy. Well, if she's not crazy, then she's lying. I never thought that she was fit to be a nun. What more proof do you need? Don't get excited, Sister Mary. Father Sapoka believes we can't totally dismiss her. He insisted a psychiatrist evaluate her mental condition. There is one more possibility. And that is? She may be telling the truth. Good evening, Sister Mary. How are you? Not well. What is troubling your sister? Our sisters follow her like sheep. Who? The stranger she acts, the more they seem to believe her. What happened this time, Sister Mary? Well, they're trying to get a painter for her, and then they want to go to the bishop about some crazy feast that supposedly was told to her by God. I think that she is putting her soul in grave danger, Father. Why do you feel so strongly that she is lying? She's very serious about it. Then there's the illness, always complaining about being sick, especially when there's heavy work to be done, very conveniently, always an excuse. Or it might be her tuberculosis. <laughs> excuse me? Did you not know? Her tests were normal. Those were just mental tests. The laboratory works took longer to return, and it came back positive for TB. She's preparing to be taken to the hospital as we speak. Men no longer behaved humanely. Countries waged war against each other out of greed. Humanity at war with itself is what pains God most. Does this soul not concern you? I died on the cross for this man. Do you wish him to perish without mercy? Recite the chaplet that I gave you to save mankind from the tyranny of the sin. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your beloved Son. Eternal Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the world for the sake of his sorrowful passion. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the world for the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on the whole world. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your beloved Son. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your beloved Son. Good evening, Sister Mary.
I was just here, and you were Sister Mary. I didn't know. I didn't know. <laughs> it's all right. You were always my sister. <laughs> Father of mercies. It is uncertain faith that your son who died on the cross was raised from the dead. We command our sister Faustina, whom you have called out of this world, into the company of saints, to be raised on the last day. Amen. Amen. I feel certain that my mission will not come to an end upon my death, but will begin," Sister Faustina wrote in her diary. It truly did. She became a model of how to be merciful to others and an instrument of re-emphasizing God's plan of mercy to the world. Sister Faustina's devotion to the merciful Jesus spread fast, gaining many hearts. Her heroic virtues were proved and soon she will be on the road to sainthood. Chodziła tylko trzy lata. Jako szesnastoletnia dziewczyna opuściła rodzinny dom i poszła na służbę do Bishop of Krakow outlined her rich and mystical spiritual life. All through her life, she aspired a full union with God. The Lord spoke to her directly for many years and gave her all the graces to spread the message and the devotion of the Divine Mercy. John Paul, in his homily on the day of her beatification on April 18, 1993, said, I salute you, Sister Faustina. Beginning today, the Church calls you blessed. O oh, Faustina, how extraordinary your life is. Precisely you, the poor and simple daughter of Mazovia, of the Polish people, were chosen by Christ to remind people of this great mystery of divine mercy. You bore this mystery of yourself. Inspired by the revelations received by Sister Faustina, John Paul II issued an encyclical, a public letter titled, God is Rich in Mercy, that defined mercy as love's second chance. After the attempt on his life and on his first pilgrimage outside Rome to the Shrine of Merciful Love, in Cola Valenza, Italy, the Pope emphasized that spreading the message of mercy was his special task. In lui, vincitore del peccato e della morte.
On April 30, 2000, Pope John Paul II canonized Sister Faustina as the first saint of the great jubilee year of the birth of Christ and of the new millennium. The message she brought to the world has become linked forever to the 20th century, the last of the second millennium, right in the middle of the first and second world wars and a bridge to the third millennium. She will be remembered forever as Saint Faustina, the Apostle of Divine Mercy. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. 